Help support the companies that support our community. Have a piece of maple here. I'm gonna go ahead and put it in between the centers and go ahead and true it up with a rough and gout. Screw it up. I'm going to go ahead and put a tenon down on this end so we can grab it in the chuck and I'm going to use the easy wood rougher for that. have it all hollowed out there wasn't a whole lot to see there on the inside got it hollowed out now I'm gonna go ahead and come around it and start putting the beads on it with the beading tool All right, I did the first two at the top there, and then I brought the tailstock back up to support it a little bit, and that will minimize the vibration on it. And then just work your way down. You just take the point of the beading tool and put it in the groove of the last one you did, and just keep working your way around. And on this beading tool, you just kind of rock it back and forth. You can kind of look at look above it. You, you watch up in here, and you can see when the flat spot disappears, and that way you know it's cutting all the way around around the tool. So just keep working your way down. All right, now that I have the top part of it beaded, I'm gonna beat the bottom too when we get down to that point. I'll flip it around and, and do those, turn this away. But I'm gonna go ahead and start burning the lines and I'm gonna use the wire burner for that. So the wire burner, these, the wires just hook right onto it like that. Have lathe speed about 2500 RPMs. And you just hold it right in the groove there. 
to insert to see smoke, just like that, and burns the line there. When you get around to where they, they start coming in from the side here, they'll probably do this one right there, and then the rest of them need to go in straight. So for those, deck of playing cards, works fantastic. Just take a, take a few cards, just regular playing cards, and hold it right into that, that glue. and they will do the same thing, they start smoking. So the reason you use the playing cards is because you can actually bend them as you're going around to get into the groove. If you tried to use the wire burner, it would try and burn straight down and it would cut it, cut it into the bead there. Pull the tailstock away here real quick. Get that last one. They work, work fantastic. All right, to burn the lines around this way, I'm gonna use a platform here. This goes on there just like that. So it has a little, uh, little stop right there. That I put on there so that it all lines up on center. So this little little caddy here, this is a burning pin and it slides into there and that the tip right there is on center with the spindle. So it's all lined up and I can just work my way around and use the indexing system. So hook up the pin here and get that all set up. All right, and then I can just start working my way, way around. Have it all burnt. So let's go ahead and take it off. And I need to change the jaws real quick. We're going to make a jam chuck so that we can go down into the top of it there and turn the foot of it off. little piece I was messing around with. Put it right in the chuck and then we'll turn that down. A little tenon on that that'll go inside of there. bring the tailstock up to support it and we'll get rid of this.
All right, I'm gonna go ahead and put the platform back on. I'll leave the tail stock up against it, and then I'll just go ahead and finish these lines all the way down. Just keep working my way around, get the whole thing burnt. Platform back on, slide it up there burner so because we burnt these around that way you want to line it right back up so turn it off here real quick so line up one any one of the beads and come in and lock it back down and then that way they're all lined up at this point and you can just start start working your way down to the bottom and the burner actually fires back up pretty quick and just work your way down. And then when you just move to the next one, it's actually all lined up and ready to go. All right, I have it all burned. I'm gonna get rid of this stuff here and get the, turn that, that little spot on the foot off. There's just a little teeny spot down there. And I'm gonna use the easy wood, the super fine detailer on that so I can get right in there. Cause this isn't being held on here by very much. So I don't wanna, wanna break it loose. I just wanna get it down and then I'll hand sand it. this tear the grain should be all right then I'll just hand sand that all right I'm just going to use this actual piece right here to make the top for it so I can put a little hook in it to hang it so I'm going to use this it looks like it's big enough so I'm going to bring that down or resize that a little bit because it, it spun a little bit and you can see where it burned it. So I'm gonna resize that real quick so it fits in there nice and tight. And I'll go ahead and get rid of this part of it. tight fit on it. Calipers here. I'm going to make the tenon a little bit bigger than it probably needs to be because I want to, I'm going to put this in the jaws and hold on to it while I'm turning the top. And I'm going to, I'm going to make it about that big so I can grab a hold of it. There we go. 
go. I don't need this material right here. So I'm going to bring this down and I'm going to cup it out a little bit so that it, when it sits on there, it kind of comes around the lip a little bit. You don't see this underneath it. that'll go up in, in there and wrap, kind of wrap around that first bead a little bit. Got pin jaws to grab hold of that. Turn the top of it. go and I have a little center hole there where I can drill in and put a little hook to hang it. All right this is a really light piece of maple so I'm going to put a little bit of this uh, age what aged wood mm -hmm. accelerator on it. The stuff dries really quick about an hour or so and it will kind of give it the same color as the, the rest of it. But yeah it's just a straight grain piece of maple so it's not going to match really well. Let's put a little bit on here. Get it to kind of blend in a little bit. All right, here is the little plug and the ornament. And that just pops right in there. Just like that. There we go. So I know, I, I thought about it when I was getting all this ready. I say this a lot. This was not my original <laughs> plan. So uh, we were going to do a Christmas ornament. I was going to do Basket Illusion, but I was going to do like a, a bell or, or something like that on it with the Basket Illusion. And I got it turned and I just didn't want to, I don't know. I didn't want to put the bell on it. I may end up doing some some of their type of pattern on it, but I just it just looks so cool and rustic. I just kind of I like that look right there, but I may end up doing some color on it on, a, on it, but I'm just not sure yet. All right, there it is. It's uh, it's about five five and a half inches tall and three inches in diameter. So it it's a piece of maple and the top actually is maple too. I just used that uh, aged wood stuff to kind of give it a little darker feel on it. But it was a fun project. I love doing this basket illusion stuff. Um, as far as the patterns go, they're just endless. Um, just do a search on Google and you can see some really cool stuff. Um, there's so many 
cool people doing just neat basket illusion stuff out there. Michael Early, I just shared a picture on the Instagram page of some bottle stoppers he did do it with basket illusion. So there's, there's a lot of neat stuff out there. All right. Hope you enjoyed the video and we will see you next week. Take care.